What is the hardest piece of organ music ever written? Even the idea of saying what qualifies as difficult is in itself a difficult question. Of course, difficulty is always going to be to some extent subjective and personal to the individual. But I've been wondering, are there certain works that all organists can agree on being harder than others? Hello, welcome to Chiff Chat, uh, a new occasional series where we talk about organ music and stuff. Um, the name's a work in progress, uh, it's a bit rubbish but we'll go with it for now. At the time of recording, I'm very nearly at 500 subscribers on YouTube, which is nice. So let's call this the 500 subspecial. I suppose you could also call this uh, an accent reveal if you've only ever seen me play the organ and uh, if you care. So for episode one, we're kicking off with a question. What is objectively the hardest piece of organ music? The organ's already a pretty tricky instrument requiring uh, two hands, two feet, often a wing and a prayer. But some composers have tried to push the boundaries and the sanity of the performers they write for by writing music that's harder than frozen nails. Um, I typed that in Google to try and get a graphic, um, and this is what came up. Uh, it's not quite what I meant, but you get the idea. To be clear, I'm not talking about stuff that's physically impossible, like when a composer has you playing with both feet and then thinks they're hilarious by writing a crescendo mark in. Uh, I'm looking at you, Rager. but rather pieces that challenge the performer from an interpretive and technical standpoint. First of all, I just wanted to quickly go over some of the hardest pieces I've personally come across. When I was learning it about 10 years ago, the set of variations on Amazing Grace from the Gospel Preludes by American composer William Balcom seemed completely insurmountable. It had a musical language that was completely new to me. I really struggled to make it all hang together, and it took me a while to get my head around the bitonality. But I spent ages learning it, and by the time it was ready for performance, it didn't really seem that bad anymore. Then I started learning the Trois Dance by Jean Alain, which had some real brain-melting rhythmic challenges, not to mention some points where your hands and legs have to absolutely fly around the keyboards, um, well, like you're dancing, so I guess that explains the time. But again, after spending some time with it, it all clicked together, uh, and I could have been a contestant on Strictly, to be honest. Other pieces I know of by reputation but don't personally play include the Missa Mundi by Charles Camilleri, which has been described as like Stravinsky's Rite of Spring for the organ. That's been recorded by Gillian Weir. Also, the Toccata in C by Franz Schmidt, which is a brilliant piece but tough as old boots. I can recommend the fantastic recording by Wayne Marshall, which sounds like it's about to take off into orbit at certain points. Probably can't go on too much longer in this video about difficult organ music without mentioning Olivier Messia, and I'd argue that his hardest composition, at least by reputation, is Les Yeux dans la Rue, The Eyes in the Wheels, from the Livre d'Org. Surprisingly, not particularly late Messian, but composed when he was in his mid-40s. It's only two minutes long, but contains no patterns and relentless semiquavers from beginning to end, um, and even the look of the score is enough to make you go, uh, no thanks. Anyway. The hardest piece I currently play is... Drum roll, please. Harp de Marie from Lord by Jean-Louis Florence. This was the piece you heard at the start of the video, and I should say at this point in the video that I don't want any of this to seem reductive, that just because a piece is difficult to play, it means that it's been written badly. No, on the contrary, this whole 30 minute work is an absolute masterpiece and I'd urge you to go and check out a recording of it. It employs some of the weirdest sounds you're ever likely to hear from an organ. Um, Florence revelled in using the unique timbre of the organ's mutation stops and their relationship to the fundamental stops to try and evoke a sense of the divine. But the style isn't too wacky that it's completely impenetrable to listen to. The reason I find it so difficult requires a little bit of context of the piece. Basically, Florence did extensive study in the field of ethnomusicology, and the inspiration behind Lord is the Ethiopian office of matins. Harp de Marie contains the tune of the Magnificat, which appears on the clarinet stop about halfway through.
The composition includes an abundance of cross rhythms, fives against sixes against sevens, all at the same time. Uh, you can think of patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time, uh, but also trying to juggle. And these cross rhythms are completely second nature to the musicians of Ethiopia. But to the Western ear, it's a lot to get your head around, and it can be a real challenge to coordinate all your limbs. And the most depressing thing is, this isn't even the hardest organ piece by Florence. So that's my personal experience with tricky organ music. Um, but I'm curious to know what others think. So now it's time to turn our attention to nerdy public internet organ forums. So if you type in hardest organ music to Google, the first result that comes up is a forum from 2007. Um, I'm just going to scan through this fairly quickly to see if we can get a general idea, because uh, as in a lot of these forum posts, someone will inevitably go off on a tangent and will just start talking about Virgil Fox for a bit. So the original poster has gone for the Bach Prelude and Fugue in D major, which uh, agreed is pretty tricky. Um, let's see if there's any advance on that though. Mention Stimmer reckons the Dupre Prelude and Fugue in G minor, which is the one with um, chords in the pedal where you have to basically break your ankle to play it effectively. Also, list Adnos. Um, I don't play that, I'm sure it's difficult, but it's also just quite long. And I suppose that's another angle. Does the long length of a piece make it inherently more difficult um, just because there are more notes? We'll probably come back to that idea later. User Jerry says, if you think the Bach D major is difficult, you should try the B minor. User Tumult in the Praetorium suggests Vienne Sixth Symphony, saying, Ooh, -er, that really is fiendishly difficult in places. Ooh, -er, indeed, Tumult. Uh, even a concrete Phil Mitchell would concede that that's pretty hard. Nyad is also here, uh, as well as the Roibka Sonata on the 94th Psalm. That's a good suggestion. Uh, the massive architecture of that piece is challenging to make hang together, um, not to mention the notes are quite hard as well. Mr. Guest says, Speaking of difficulty, anyone ever tried the Sarabji symphonies? Shh! Spoilers for the later part of the video. Yeah, 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 Virgil Fox, yeah. Ah, okay, here we go. I'm surprised more of you haven't mentioned Bach's trio sonatas. Is there any organ music that so mercilessly exposes the slightest weakness of technique? Since they don't exactly provoke an audience to a stand innovation in concert, I think a lot of organists just don't bother to learn them. Who wants to work so hard to play these sonatas, only to have someone come up to you and say, that was cute? I was with you at the start, but you lost me at the end. Yeah, the trio sonatas of Bach are obviously a strong contender, um, requiring total independence between all the limbs, a really solid technique and plenty of musicality, so they project to the listener as emotional pieces rather than just technical exercises. Thanks for mentioning the trio sonatas. I had the privilege in about 1973 of hearing Virgil Fox play one of them. Oh, okay, that's enough of that. Right, I think it's time we turned to someone who's an expert on the subject of difficult organ music, certified hard man, Kevin Bowyer. Kevin has a well-earned reputation as a phenomenal player uh, particularly when it comes to music that most other people won't even touch. I dropped him an email to get his thoughts on the subject, and he had the following suggestions, which I've looked into. First of all, there's this piece by Yanis Zanakis, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. It looks like a bad hand at Scrabble. In fact, let's see how Google pronounces it. G-M-E-E-O-O-R-H there's a brilliant video on the Royal College of Organists page where Kevin goes into great detail explaining the complexities of this piece, and I highly recommend watching that. Basically, aside from the musical language being highly dissonant, which is a given at this point, the piece also requires large wooden planks to be placed over the pedal board, um, and it's been known to fuse organs, so that's pretty cool. Zanakis died about 20 years ago, but 2022 is his 100th anniversary, um, so you never know, some more people might decide to learn 
G-M-E-E-O-O-R-H. Next is the piece Siebensterne by Brian Fernihau. I didn't actually know Fernie Howe had written any organ music, um, but it turns out it looks just as impossible as most of his other stuff. This is a composer called The Father of New Complexity, who exclusively writes music which makes enormous, uh, some might say absolutely unreasonable, demands on the performer. I couldn't find a copy of this online, but here's what another one of his scores looks like. Just the density of notes on display here, you really get spider tap dancing through wet ink kind of vibes. All right, I know what you're thinking. This video is long enough, just get on with it. What is the hardest piece of organ music I could find? Well, the man of the hour is Kakhosru Shapurji Sarabji. Sarabji was a largely self-taught 20th century composer born to English Indian parents, and he felt a large sense of isolation and not belonging throughout his life due to his heritage and his sexuality. His music is therefore very personal intimate and intricate. He used to perform his own works but then stopped doing this and then all but put a ban on others performing his works too, which lasted about 40 years. I think in his view he'd rather have no performance than a bad performance. In his 60s he moved away from the hustle and bustle of London and lived in a little house he built for himself in the tiny village of Corf Castle, Dorset. He's an enigmatic character for sure, there's not a lot of biographical material around. This mystery led to more intrigue and myths, and Sarabji himself used to tell little fibs in his interviews, and probably not because he enjoyed it, but probably just because he wanted to get people off his back. Those works which were accessible in his lifetime were understandably difficult to comprehend because of their hyper-complexity and cryptic nature, uh, and that led to quite polarising public opinion. He described himself as a claustrophiliac, enjoying his own company over that of others. By all accounts, this lofty persona, as some critics perceived it, was completely at odds with his actual character, which the residents of his village described as very pleasant. Time then to take a look at his Organ Symphony No. 1, which is two hours long and 80 pages of music that looks like this. It was written in 1924 and dedicated to Emily Edroff Smith, a concert organist and friend of Sarabji's mum, who helped him with his early organ studies. Kevin Bowyer has recorded this on the Continuum label, but in terms of live performances, you can count the number of people who play this piece on one hand, and it's fairly easy to see why. I mean, even just looking at the first page, you can see how virtuosic the pedal writing is. Not to mention, there's some massively spaced chords, and we're already on to four staves. Without wanting to seem patronising, it's genuinely mind-boggling to me how this level of complex music is composed, never mind performed. So, it doesn't get much harder than that, right? Wrong! Organ Symphony No. 2 is 350 pages and nearly 500 minutes long. Unlike the first symphony, this one doesn't hang around. Straight away, it looks like you need to get your calculator out before we've even hit bar 2. This is the piece that Kevin very modestly told me is the toughest nut he's ever failed to crack. He candidly told me that, without exaggeration, it's about 100 times harder than the Brian Fernie Howe piece. Incidentally, Kevin now writes novels, and uh, a man who can learn, perform and make sense of eight hours of this kind of atonal, polytextural stuff can surely weave a masterful mystery narrative, so do go and give him a read. I'm totally at peace with the fact that I'm never going to play the Sarabji organ symphonies. It definitely takes a certain type of character to commit to such an enormous undertaking. Uh, we only get one life to live, and I've not even been to Scotland yet. But there is actually a third Sarabji organ symphony. That as far as the Sarabji archive website lists isn't played by anyone. This one's only a mere 305 pages long, but in terms of performance length, uh, I think it's even longer than number two. So, by my reckoning, the hardest piece of organ music is a piece that no one's even dared to tackle yet. That raises the question, who will be first? All I'll say is that there's probably an easier way to get a Guinness World Record. In conclusion, why do we learn hard music? Why do we put ourselves through the pain and torture of a process that often just feels like you're banging your head against a brick wall? Well, it's like they always say, anything worth doing is going to be difficult. It's just part of the human condition to want to push ourselves, and it helps us grow musically. Not to mention, 
learning something rock hard can make easier pieces seem much more manageable by comparison. Learning a tricky piece of organ music can sometimes feel like you're climbing Everest. But once you reach the top, it's nice to look back on what you've conquered and enjoy the view. So we've gone hard, now it's time to go home. I hope you learned something. This wouldn't be YouTube if the video didn't end with me aggressively asking you to subscribe. Uh, so here it goes. Yeah, that'll do. There's also a little symbol stand bell down below. Um, you can click that too if you want, I don't know what it does. There are more organ videos coming soon. Let me know in the comments below what you think the hardest organ pieces are. I'm really interested to know. All pieces mentioned in this video will be linked in the description box below, uh, including a link to a playlist um, which you can listen to if you're feeling brave or sadistic. If you've liked the format of this video, or my scratchy monotone voice, uh, let me know, uh, I might do another one. Or if you think it was rubbish and you just want me to upload the entire works of Le Faber Veli, uh, also let me know that as well. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye.